How's it going guys? My name's Wilson. Kobe Bryant officially just turned 40 years old. Retired for more than two years, his basketball greatness and legacy will never be forgotten. The five-time NBA champ is best known for his Mamba mentality, killer instinct, and ability to deliver under pressure. So without further ado, here are 40 Kobe Bryant facts that will leave you speechless. If Kobe's family stayed in Italy, he would have tried to play professional soccer. It wasn't until he moved to Philly that he truly committed to basketball. Growing up in Italy between the ages of 6 to 14, Kobe played soccer every day. Moved back to Philly after his father retired playing professionally in 91. With limited practice time and space for basketball in Italy, Kobe was constantly getting chased off by masses of kids who wanted to play soccer. During Kobe's father's basketball games at halftime, that was where Kobe took advantage of getting some shots up before the start of the second half. Kobe didn't beat his father one-on-one -on -one until he was 16. Kobe probably never lost a one-on-one -on -one game throughout his NBA career. As Kobe grew older, his pops got more physical with him, drawing elbows. Whenever his mom walked out of the court, that's when the elbow stopped. Jelly Bean Joe Bryan played 8 seasons in the NBA before finishing his professional career in Italy. Spent time with the Sixers, Clippers, and Rockets. Averaged over 8 points, 4 rebounds as a 6'9" forward. Kobe was known for his amazing work ethic, always putting in the extra work, very disciplined at an early age, arriving at his high school gym at 5 in the morning just to work on his game, leave at 7 a.m. to get ready for school, would always be the last one out of practice after school. Kobe used to make his high school teammates play him one on one. One of his former teammates named Rob Schwartz, who he constantly destroyed at practice, Kobe would score as many as 80 straight points before allowing a single basket. Rob claimed the best he's ever done against Kobe was getting beat 100 to 12. Kobe denies that, saying he never got more than 5 baskets on him. It translated to the NBA, where Kobe would have younger players stay after practice where he tried different moves on them. In a pre-draft workout with the Lakers, Jerry West had the 17-year-old Kobe play the 40-year-old Michael Cooper one-on-one, -on -one, retire for 6 years, known for his time with the Showtime Lakers and a former defensive player of the year, former teammate Norm Nixon was at the gym screaming for Coop to be more physical with the kid, but Kobe was just destroying him, hitting as many as 10 fadeaway jumpers from 16-17 feet in a row. From then on, GM Jerry West knew it was destined Kobe was gonna be a Laker. As the king of one-on-one, -on -one, former teammate J.R. Ryder trash-talked Kobe in practice. Ryder, a solid NBA player, averaged 19.3 points the year before, but wasn't a dread to take minutes away from Kobe. Kobe insisted to play him after practice. Phil Jackson quickly responded, Alright, you wanna go? Everybody off the court. As the whole team watched the 22 year old Kobe demolished him, embarrassed him so badly, teammates were waving white towels screaming, Stop the beatdown, please! Please stop! When Kobe finished him off, teammates were like, man, why you gotta do him like that? Ryder was so angry, he wanted to fight everybody at the gym. A lot of young basketball fans might not know who J.R. Ryder is, but when Kobe was about 20 years old, him and Tracy McGrady were in Germany, played three games of one-on-one, -on -one. Kobe won all three, one game beating him 11-2. After the third game, McGrady claimed he had back spasms and couldn't play anymore. T-Mac would later deny it on social media, but Kobe said it was 100% true. Hmm, I'ma believe Kobe. Kobe's also beaten a bunch of guys one-on-one, -on -one, like Reggie Miller, Karan Butler, Grant Hill. As a rookie, he beat Nick Van Exel and Eddie Jones one-on-one, -on -one, to name a few. Many fans remember Kobe as one of the best offensive players and scorers the game has ever seen, but he's made All-NBA defensive first team in 2000. As a 21-year-old, didn't make All-NBA first team till two years later in 2002, was known as one of the best perimeter lockdown defenders in the league at that early age. Kobe used to practice competing against his own shadow in the dark gym, would work out intensely on his footwork. He'd be cutting and grunting and motioning like he was dribbling and shooting, practice without even having a basketball. Kobe was also the last bench player to make the All-Star Game in 1998, his first of many. Still the youngest player in NBA history at 19 years old to become an All-Star, was also the starter at 19 for the Western Conference. Known for his amazing practice habits, basically living in the gym 24-7, everybody needs some rest at some point. The average person sleeps 8 to 9 hours every day, Kobe didn't need much of it to function. Kobe used to get 3 to 4 hours of sleep on average. 
still became one of the best players all time with little rest, increased his sleep to 6 to 8 hours in the latter part of his career. Even when Kobe was injured, couldn't play, it didn't stop him from wanting to get better. After getting hurt, former teammate John Celestine was excited, thinking he had the gym all by himself. Every time he wanted to be the first to practice, as he's always been at Villanova and even during his high school days, he always got angry when Kobe beat him to the gym. He knew there was no way Kobe would be the first to practice when he was hurt. Turns out, as Celestine walked through the training room, he was fearful to hear the ball bouncing, was like, no, it couldn't be. Yes, it was. Kobe was already in a full sweat with a cast on his right arm, dribbling and shooting with the left. Not to mention that Celestine only lived 10 minutes from the gym, while Kobe lived at least 35 minutes away. Kobe was that dedicated to his craft. In the 2000 finals, Jalen Rose later admitted he intentionally injured Kobe early game 2, sticking his foot on his ankle, hoping Kobe would miss a couple games. Trainer Gavi Vitti popped his ankle back in place, only missed game 3. Rose didn't expect Kobe to return, but came back game 4. The Pacers' plan was to get Shaq in foul trouble, which they did. Shaq fouled out while the Lakers bench was worried. 21-year-old Kobe dropped 28, took over in overtime, was like, calm down everybody, I got this. Kobe also shared his favorite memory of Allen Iverson in 99 against him in Philly, where AI dropped 41 on him, which was a turning point in Kobe's career, on the bus after the game saying to himself, I gotta be one of the best defensive players all time because I can't have this happen again. Inspiring Kobe to get better, AI drove Kobe to become more obsessive about the game. His obsession was so consuming, his rookie year, Kobe flipped the table, drew chairs, and broke the TV in the hotel room. After seeing Iverson score 35 the same night, he only scored 2 points. Not only did he study every piece of video of Iverson that he found, he also studied the way how great white sharks hunt seals. Kobe got his revenge in the February game of 2000. AI only scored 16 points the entire game. Not only was Kobe hard on himself, but sometimes harsh on teammates. In an interview with Jamel Hill for the BET Genius Talks in 2015, Kobe told a story about a young European player he made cry. A player you guys won't even remember. Kobe was like, I can't even pronounce his name. Kobe said to him, you might want to reconsider what your life purpose is. If you want to play the guessing game, Kobe had two European players who came off the bench. I'm sure everything worked out in the end since the Lakers team ended up winning multiple titles. Although Kobe never mentioned his name, I'll let you guys decide who it was. College basketball analyst Jay Williams played with the Chicago Bulls. The game was at 7. Williams' goal was try to outwork everybody, came to the gym at 3, making sure he made 400 shots, but Kobe was already working out, doing game moves, and after Williams was done for a solid hour and a half, he sits there, watches Kobe. Another 25 minutes go by, Jay has seen enough. After the game was over, Williams asked Kobe why he worked so hard. Kobe was like, cause I saw you come in, and I wanted you to know, it doesn't matter how hard you work, that I'm willing to work harder than you. Always preparing for what's next, Kobe watches film of himself at halftime and after games on the airplane, pulls teammates over, it didn't matter if they were playing cards or sleeping, Kobe would wake you up and pull them aside. It just shows his commitment to winning, knowing every detail and improving every day. Kobe's dedication to basketball never stopped during his time with the NBA. In the 2008 Olympics, everybody on the team alongside the staff experienced firsthand Kobe's dedication to the gym as a wake up call to them. As Kobe continued Continued to work out while everyone was sleeping. At the start of training camp, everyone came down for breakfast. Kobe was drenched in sweat through his workout gear with ice on his knees with his trainers. Everyone thought they were working hard, but Kobe was working harder. In the 2012 Olympics, before the team's first practice, Kobe and his trainer Tim Groover completed a 40 mile bike ride that ended at 2 in the morning, riding through the desert in Vegas. Just 5 hours later, Kobe was back in the gym hours before a full day of practice. That same Olympics, Kobe texted texted one of his trainers at 4.15 in the morning for doing some conditioning work. Worked out for 2 hours, the trainer went back to the hotel and crashed, expected to be on the floor again at 11 am. Kobe was already at the gym, shooting jumpers. The trainer asked when he finished. Kobe said, just now, I wanted to make 800 shots. Showing up more than 7 hours early to practice, incredible. In 2007, the number one high school player in the country attended the Kobe Bryant Basketball Academy. That player was OJ Mayo, who asked Kobe if the two can work out together at some point. Kobe said, yeah, I'll pick you up at 3. 
3 o'clock came the next day, Mayo asked Kobe where he was that afternoon. Kobe replied, 3 in the morning, not 3 in the afternoon. His hard work and hunger will always be remembered, as Kobe has drawn many comparisons to the great Michael Jordan, the closest thing we've seen to MJ. Phil Jackson was asked whether Carmelo Anthony should model his game after Kobe. Phil said, no, no one can approach that. I don't expect anybody to be able to model their behavior after that. Kobe modeled his behavior a lot about Michael Jordan, but he went beyond Michael in his attitude towards training, and I know Mike would probably question me saying that, but he did. So, according to Phil Jackson, Kobe worked harder than Michael Jordan. Instead of shying away from the challenge and comparisons to MJ, Kobe simply embraced it, creating a legacy of his own. During his last game against Jordan, he made a statement proving who was going to be the face of the NBA for the next decade. It was March 28, 2003. Kobe made it very clear it was his league, scored a game high 55 points. The 24 year old Brian shot 9 of 13 from downtown, dropped 42 in the first half. Michael Jordan would officially retire for the final time two weeks later. Talk about greatness passing on greatness. That same season, to one of the largest comebacks in NBA history, if you can depend on one superstar to come back from a 30 point deficit, Said, who would you choose? Well, guess what? Kobe Bryant's done that. On December 6, 2002, Bryant and the Lakers trailed by 30, early third quarter, against a very good Dallas team. Down 88 to 61, entering the fourth, Kobe scored 21 of his 27 points in the final period, nailed the go ahead game winning jumper with 8.4 seconds left. That was absolutely epic. Kobe continued to destroy Dallas three years later on December 20, 2005. The Mamba unloaded, destroying the map, scoring every way he could. Kobe was laser focused from the start, never fist pumped, trash talked or celebrated, he was just in the zone, scored an incredible 30 points in the third quarter alone, single handedly outscored the Mavericks by himself 62-61 in 3 quarters. Kobe didn't even play in the fourth since the Lakers were blowing them out so badly and that was not just an average team, that Mavs team won 60 games that year, got to the finals. If Kobe would have played the fourth quarter, he might have dropped 90. A month and two days later, we all remember Kobe scoring 81 on the Raptors. That's paid back for what Jalen Rose deserves after he purposely injured Kobe in the finals six years before. With legendary performances like that, you always wonder what Kobe did to prep himself before. Turns out, Kobe wasn't eating that healthy. The night before, he had pepperoni pizza and grape soda. Before the game, Kobe ate a burger with fries. Kobe eating junk food right before the greatest game of his career, I was expecting some pasta with salad. At the time, it didn't matter as Kobe was 27 years old in the very prime of his career. That month in January of 06, Kobe averaged an astonishing 43.4 points, the highest scoring month in nearly 55 years since Will Chamberlain's 45.8 point mark in March of 63. Will Chamberlain and Elgin Baylor were the only two other players to average 40 for an entire month, which happened in the 60s. Will did it 11 times, Kobe did it 4 different times, something we probably won't see for a very long time. Kobe's also the last player in over 50 years since Will to score more than 50 points in 4 consecutive games, doing so in March of 2007. After dropping 65 against Portland, 50 the next game against the Timberwolves, 60 against Memphis, then 50 on the Hornets, prime Kobe was simply unstoppable. Too bad his supporting cast wasn't that good. Kobe also dropped 40 points on every team in the NBA, with 40 his lowest against the Pistons, scored 50 plus against 17 different teams. Kobe's often been considered at the very minimum a top 5 scorer in NBA history. Many argue whether Kobe or Kevin Durant's the better scorer. Kobe dropped 60 a total of 6 times, more times than Durant scored 50. He's done it 5 times. Only 5 current NBA players right now scored over 60, and Devin Booker, Carmelo Anthony, LeBron James, James Harden, and Klay Thompson. They all done it once. Even during Kobe's worst games, his killer instinct always makes him dangerous at any moment. Even if he goes 2 of 20, he'll still find a way to beat you. In a late regular season game in 2012 against the Hornets, Kobe had one of the worst games of his career. His fourth worst shooting game on over 10 attempts, Kobe was held scoreless for 3 quarters, missed 15 straight shots, down 2 with 20 seconds left. Kobe was 2 of 20 from the field, but delivered the go ahead game winner in stunning fashion. Even on his worst days, Kobe will still find a way to beat you. You can never doubt the Mamba. There was also one time in Charlotte where Kobe kept missing shots in pre-game. Kobe went up to rookie Gerald Henderson and said, there's something wrong with the rim. Henderson, a Philly native, idolized Kobe, glanced over, seeing how he prepared. The weird thing was, Kobe was missing more shots than making them when nobody was around. 
Kobe stopped shooting, the maintenance crew came, a ladder was set under the basket, with Kobe pointing at the rim where there was a measuring tape. Turned out, the rim was a quarter of an inch short of 10 feet, just a tiny quarter too low. Kobe shot so much in his career, most NBA players probably don't realize if the hoop's a fraction of an inch off. It's amazing Kobe's able to sense little things like that. At times, Kobe even works too hard, that ended up hurting his game. After losing to Boston in 08, Kobe called MJ, asked for advice. His knees were killing him, wasn't sure if he can sustain the level of physical excellence. MJ said, use my guy, recommended his former trainer Tim Groover. The two looked at tape in the 08 playoffs to see what actually went wrong. Turned out, Kobe peaked too early, was killing the Jazz and Spurs, then worn down once the finals came. He was actually overworking his body and needed to work out less during the playoffs and had to pace himself instead of going all out every day. Before his last game where he dropped 60, Kobe was almost late to the arena because he was editing a bunch of short stories, didn't leave the office till after 4 p.m., was already getting ready for life after basketball. After he dropped 60 on his final game, it was the perfect ending to a legendary career. The last time Kobe even scored 50 before that was way back in February of 09, where Kobe scored 61 against the Knicks at MSG, more than 7 years apart, where Kobe Bryant even reached the 50 point plateau. Succeeding in life after retirement, Bryant became the first NBA player to win an Academy Award. Nominated for his film Dear Basketball, featured animations with the poem Kobe wrote to announce his retirement, winning an Oscars award less than 2 years transitioning after playing 20 years in the NBA, there's nothing Kobe Bryant can't do. Kobe was preparing for life after the NBA, even 3 years before retirement. In 2013, Kobe and business partner Jeff Steibel founded a $100 million investment firm named after Brian Steibel, focused on funding technology, media, and data companies, and helping entrepreneurs becoming successful building their companies. Now focused on the business world, Kobe continues to educate himself, texting the most successful business leaders, even at 3 in the morning, picking their brains, guys like Michael Rapoli, and making the right investments. Kobe rather be known for venture investing than basketball. In an interview with CNBC, Kobe said the focus of playing basketball is winning. There's going to be another team that wins a title, another player that wins MVP, but if you really want to create something that lasts generations, you have to help inspire the next generation, then they create something great and that generation will inspire the one behind them. That's when you create something forever. A week before turning 40 years old, Coca-Cola purchased a minority stake in the sports drink Body Armor, where Kobe put $6 million into the company. Now his stake is worth over $200 million, a $194 million profit. Pretty amazing, as Kobe earned $328 million playing 20 years in the NBA, $194 million in 4.5 years. Talk about big bucks. If Kobe keeps this up, there's a chance he can become a billionaire. Those are 40 incredible facts about the Black Mamba. Not only will Kobe be remembered as one of the greatest basketball players ever, but will also be one of the most influential figures of our lifetime. For all his accomplishments on the basketball court to dominating in the business world, the Mamba mentality will always continue to inspire us all. Growing up as a huge Kobe fan myself, Kobe inspired me to be the best that I can in everything that I do, to bring my NBA knowledge and content to you. Thank you so much for watching this video. What are your thoughts on Kobe Bryant? What memories do you have of the Black Mamba? Let me know in the comments below. I talk NBA comparisons, amazing storylines, NBA history, and anything basketball that will interest you. If you love my content, subscribe to my channel. More good stuff coming soon. See you next time.